What? Where am I? Sundaman used this. Oh, what is this? E to the power of d by dx. d by dx is written in a strange place. I've never seen such an expression before. Now move forward. Wait a minute, how do I use this? Oh, I had a weird dream. Sundaman, what's wrong? Matten, you're here. Just now in my dream. Be careful, the problem is coming. What? 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 Whoa, what's going on? This, this is... That wasn't just a dream. Finally, this moment has come. Ah, uh, it seems you know something. Can you explain it? Very well, I shall explain. In certain types of functions, you can assign meaning to an expression by substituting d by dx for the variable. Substituting d by dx. That sounds kind of strange. But even if you substitute d by dx for x in this exponential function, it would just turn into a strange expression. Yeah, it's a bit tough to understand. So first, let's represent the exponential function in another form. First, we assume that the exponential function e to the x can be expressed as an infinite sum, a so-called power series. That's a big assumption from the start. What happens if we differentiate both sides with respect to x? Well, the left-hand side stays the same, since differentiation doesn't change it. On the right-hand side, the constant term just disappears when you differentiate it. Next, differentiating the linear term gives a constant and differentiating the quadratic term works like this. It continues in the same way after that. That sounds good. So can you find the coefficients of this power series? Alright, first, by substituting x equals 0 into this equation, we can see that a sub 0 equals e to the 0 equals 1. Then we can compare the coefficients of the two expressions First, comparing the constant terms, we get a sub 1 equals a sub 0, equals 1. Next, comparing the linear terms, we get a sub 2 equals a sub 1 over 2, equals 1 half. Comparing the quadratic terms, we get a sub 3 equals a sub 2 over 3, equals 1 over 3 factorial. By substituting these calculated coefficients back into the original equation, you can write the exponential function as a power series like this. Using sigma, we can also represent it this way. Nice. This is the form known as the Maclaurin series of the exponential function. Although this isn't a rigorous proof, it's known that this formula is actually correct. Now let's boldly substitute d by dx for x here. Then we get... Is this the true form of e to the d by dx? I feel like we're doing something forbidden. Instead of x, d by dx is added. x squared is replaced with the second derivative operator. And x cubed is replaced with the third derivative operator. What does this expression even mean? Well, if you want to know that, you should apply e to the d by dx to a function f of x. If you substitute the previous expression into this, it takes this form. Here, let's remove the parentheses. As if the distributive property held. What in the world happened? This infinite sum didn't make much sense on its own. It was unclear what was being added. But this expression makes sense. This infinite sum is the addition we're familiar with. We're starting to see its true nature. So, let's calculate this expression as an example. It's a bit complicated, but this is applying e to the d by dx to the usual exponential function e to the x. Sundaman, do it! Ah, okay. So, proceeding with the calculations as before, it looks like this. No matter how many times you differentiate e to the x, it doesn't change. Here, since e to the x does not include n, we can bring it out in front of the sigma. And if you look closely at this part, it takes the form of the Maclaurin series for e to the x with x replaced by 1, which results in e itself, and the answer becomes like this. Well done, Zindaman. When e to the d by dx is applied to e to the x, x shifts by 1. It's quite an interesting result. Let's calculate one more example. Zindaman, can you do it? Yes. So in this case, the target function is x itself. First, when n equals 0, the coefficient part looks like this. Here, it's the zeroth derivative meaning do nothing and just write the original expression. Next, when n equals 1, the coefficient is like this. 
here it's the first derivative, so just apply the usual differentiation, and differentiating x results in 1. Any further higher order derivatives result in 0, so we can ignore the remaining terms. Remembering that 0 factorial is 1, we get this result. When e to the d by dx is applied to x, it shifts x by 1 as expected. Perhaps if we apply this to x squared, it will shift x by 1 again? That might be the case. Well, let's give it a try. And so it ends up like this. Just as predicted, it doesn't seem to be a coincidence. When you apply e to the d by dx to x, the result is x plus 1. And when you apply it to x squared, the result is x plus 1 squared. From this, we can make a certain conjecture which is, for a natural number n, e to the d by dx maps x to the n to x plus 1 to the n. Hmm, is that really true? How about calculating one more example to confirm? No, we should proceed. Ah, okay. By the way, this equality should also hold when n equals 0. Furthermore, since d by dx corresponds to 1, if we attach a coefficient a to d by dx, we expect the result to also be multiplied by a. That's a bold prediction. But I'm curious to see what actually happens. If this works out, we might be able to extend the application to general functions. So let's actually calculate it. First, substituting a d by dx into the Maclaurin series for e to the x gives us this. We use k here to avoid overlap with n. Now let's consider that this part can be separated into a to the k and the kth derivative operator. And since differentiating x to the n more than n times results in zero, we only need to sum up to the nth term. Here, the kth derivative of x to the n can be calculated with this formula. So we see that the binomial coefficient appears in this part. And this is the binomial expansion formula itself. Excellent, Zindaman. Yes, x is shifted by a. It seems my prediction was correct. I didn't expect it to be proven so smoothly. What's more, this result can be generalized. What do you mean? Please explain in detail. No need to rush. First, let's assume that f of x can be expressed as a power series. I see. That's a good assumption. In fact, by using the Maclaurin series, many well-known functions, including exponential and trigonometric functions, can be represented in this form. As a side note, cn is given by this formula. Thanks for the additional info. Now, let's proceed with the actual calculation. First, expand f of x into a power series, then bring e to the a d by dx inside the sigma. This part takes the form we proved earlier, and we know that x shifts by a. Therefore, it takes the form of the power series for f of x, with x replaced by x plus a. I see, that's how it was. I think this proof looks good overall, but we need to be careful with this equality. e to the a d by dx is defined as the infinite sum, and the order of summation is changed. But we need to be cautious about whether we can actually change the order. Come to think of it, that could be right. By the way, if we prove it by another method, we can avoid changing. What, really? Tell me quickly. Then let's assume that f of x can be expanded into a Taylor series. A Taylor series is a type of power series that represents a function. It does not always converge to the original function, but we assume it does in this case. In particular this is called the Taylor series of f of x around x equals a. Note that this part consists of coefficients that do not include x. Also the Taylor series with a equals zero is specifically called the Maclaurin series. The Maclaurin series came up earlier. Here by replacing x with x plus a, we get an equation like this. Now that the preparations are complete, let's calculate this expression, which has this meaning. The nth derivative of f of x can be written like this as well. In other words, this is equal to f of x plus a. Wait, wait a minute. I didn't quite understand the last part. In the last part, we're just using this Taylor series formula. Really? But it looks a bit different. Look at the left-hand side of this equation. It's a symmetric expression with respect to x and a. So if you swap x and a, the result doesn't change. Wow, if you swap x and a, the last equality holds. But this is not the Taylor series around a, it's around x instead. 
It's a bit confusing, but essentially this problem is almost the Taylor series itself. It seems so. This operator e to the ad by dx can be thought of as the shift operator, because it shifts the function f of x by a. Shift operator, huh? That's a pretty cool name. Anyway, it's a very mysterious formula. Even though it can be proven, why does it seem so mysterious? While we can follow the proof step by step, the question of why the result is a shift remains. To answer that question actually, this formula can be thought of as representing an accumulation of infinitesimal shifts. I wish you had told me that from the beginning. Now we will focus on intuitive understanding, so please note that it may not be rigorous. It's gonna get complicated. First, let's consider the finite difference delta sub h. Delta sub h f of x is defined as the difference f of x plus h minus f of x. Here, if we move f of x to the left-hand side, 1 plus delta sub h means shifting x by h. So, this represents the shift operator in another form. Hmm, I see. This definition looks somewhat similar to that of differentiation. That's an important point. When h is sufficiently close to zero, d by dx can be approximated using delta sub h over h. As h approaches zero, this becomes the definition of differentiation itself. Furthermore, multiplying both sides by h, we can express delta sub h in terms of d by dx like this. Now to calculate e to the a d by dx, remember that Euler's number e is defined in this way. In general, the exponential function e to the x can be expressed like this. Sundaman, do you know what to do next? Um, are we going to substitute a d by dx for x and e to the x again? Yes. So when we substitute a d by dx for x, we get this. Here as n becomes infinitely large, a over n approaches zero. So we can use this approximation for a over n d by dx, resulting in this. Since n approaches infinity, it's okay to use an equal sign, instead of an approximation sign. Also, 1 plus delta is the shift operator itself. So repeating the a over n shift n times, results in a shift by a. Wow, that's amazing. But actually, I didn't quite get it. It might have been hard. To summarize, e to the a d by dx represents a certain distance shift by accumulating infinitesimal shifts. I think I get it, maybe. Are you okay? By the way, you might have noticed, but the relationship between exponential functions and shifts naturally appears in Fourier transforms as well. I won't explain the definition of Fourier transform here, but it's a transformation that maps certain functions to other functions. I think I remember something about that. Here, let's denote the Fourier transform of f of x by f hat omega. Then it's known that the Fourier transform of d by dx f of x is i omega f hat omega. So except to the imaginary unit, d by dx just becomes a variable through the Fourier transform. That's right. Or you can think of the operation of differentiating a function as being transformed into the operation of multiplying the function by a variable. Furthermore, the Fourier transform of f of x plus a is e to the i a omega f hat omega. Huh? This form looks familiar. Yes, x in f of x is shifted by a. And if we rewrite this using e to the a d by dx, just like before, except for the imaginary unit, d by dx corresponds to a variable. Oh my! Somehow, it feels like a natural correspondence. So, this was a somewhat unusual discussion on differentiation. How was it? The result was surprisingly simple, just shifting the function. There are various applications of the shift operator, and it plays an important role in quantum mechanics, for example. The shift operator, it's quite a formidable one. If you're interested in more unusual discussions on differentiation, check out this video on half derivatives. Well then, take care everyone. See you later.